Welcome back, everybody. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe, press the bell icon if you like the content. Check out the top right eye for more nice links. How are you all doing? Today is all about the engine class. I know a lot of you haven't worked with scripting languages. And if you have not, this is the tutorial and series for you because we're going to be going a step ahead here. We're going to be making an engine that is connected with a scripting language, but also it, this core is C++. So this is going to be really cool. You'll see the flexibility in this and you'll want to use this in every game project you have in the future because it makes things so much easier let's just get started first of all i'm gonna make a engine class here call it engine appropriately i'd call it swag engine if i could but i can't this is a professional tutorial guys let's do private here i know a lot of you flip out because i have my private above my public <laughs> but that's just the way i like doing things if you guys don't want to do something that i'm doing please don't that'll save you a lot of energy you don't have to go in there write a comment to me come on why don't you do it this way or that way you guys can do it exactly like you want to do it remember i'm just showing you ways to do specific things uh you can do them in different ways if you feel your way is better please go ahead and do it that way let's go ahead and define a engine constructor a engine destructor like that and i'm gonna do a few sections here i'm gonna create a few sections constructors this is also something i get a lot of comments on because i do these comments now this is for beginners guys if a beginner is watching this or someone who is kind of confused of what's going on it's a lot easier to know what functions are under which category where everything is it's a little easier to understand that's why i do these if you don't want to put these comments down please don't put them down so i just section off this a little bit we have an engine shell class ready now i'll open the cpp file so we can start adding code i really recommend you guys to use visual studio 2019 for this if you're working on any other id or platform please make sure you have modern c++ stuff going otherwise stuff like pragma ones might not work you'll have a few issues and i don't want you guys to have issues that's the last thing i want and i get a lot of comments from people having these ide issues which i can't help you with that often because i have no clue or there's some other minor issues really hard for me to debug code there's a lot of you guys out there only one of me and nevertheless i'll do my best here we are we have an engine now let's just talk about what an engine is gonna need like we said we'll be running a lua so of course we need a lua state here and we'll just call it l that's all we're gonna do and it's gonna be a construct or a pointer here once we have our lua state we need to initialize that state it's very very important and i'm gonna put that under private functions here void init lua state define the lua state now to define this what we need to do is we need to remember we need to load the libraries in we need to create a new state load the libraries in and then just get it started that's pretty much what we need to do and then we can use that state as we wish so before i forget let's do this init lua state in the constructor in the destructor i want you to say lua close this l and this is just cleanup stuff this right here will close the state for us and rinse up all the data and all that stuff and here we're just going to initialize and create a new state l equals lua l new state and i want you to use lua l just like i said it's much better it's the faster version then we're gonna do lua open libs lua l open libs into this l once that is done you have initialized lua and we're gonna go on to the next step which is gonna be init states and this is not lua states this is our game states and our engine is gonna run on states that means that whatever state is open we're gonna be updating that state and going from there we're not gonna bother too much with the states right now i just want one file which we can then go ahead and open to see that lua is working and the state is initialized and everything's fine push a few numbers to there just so we can see that everything is working fine to do that, I just want you to say Lua L do file, and then we're gonna say maybe game state Lua dot Lua. And then in here, we're gonna say this L. We're gonna load this file, if it exists, into the Lua state. And everything that's in this file is gonna be done in this call. Usually you divide this up into two things. You divide it up into the load file, which loads it and puts it on the stack. And then you do p call, which is kind of a general thing in Lua where you call something, you call a function, you call some functionality that's placed on the stack. Doing that is kind of hard because or it's, it's, it's a little more complicated because you have to write more code. This is a lot more clean. 
you have to run it in debug as well. Sometimes P call and stuff bugs out if you're running it in release. So do it through do file, even if you have done the P call way before. And of course, any good engine handles errors. So first of all, there is a way to get an error from this. Let's do an int and then we'll say equals to Lua do file. And this will return the result if it was successfully loaded or not. And it will be put into this error. And we're going to handle this in a little bit. First of all, we're just going to make sure it runs. To do that, of course, we need to make a new file, which is this game state Lua file. So I'm going to add a filter here. I'm going to say Lua dates. And in this filter, I'm going to add a new item and it can be anything. It can be a CPP file, whatever, but I'm going to call it game state Lua dot Lua. And this is our first Lua state. It doesn't really do much, but we can do a little print in here. We can say print hello 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 from lua usually that's what i do it's a very simple very very simple script and this will be run when we do the do file now we haven't really called anything in engine and because we haven't really created the engine yet we haven't created an object out of this so remember this is your main file and here's where we're going to do all our stuff for the engine but it's going to be a very very small main function it's just basically going to be one thing here which is going to be engine.run and then it will catch any exception that is thrown so what we can do we can do try and then we'll create an engine object engine engine like that and of course we need to include engine.h and we'll run engine.run here and it will try it and it will throw stuff but if it catches something catch exception e we're gonna catch an std exception e and then we're just gonna do std c out e dot what and a new line we can also write error here as a very simple way to write an error message if this this catches anything thrown in here and that's basically all we want to do so for now that is fine let's go to our engine.h and in functions we'll do a void update here and we'll do a void render here and then a void run which will then call both of these that's what we want to do defining these of course with the control and dot in visual studio otherwise you can google depending on what keyboard you have you're gonna have to google what that shortcut is once you have these defined you're ready to go in engine you'll see them defined here they won't do anything right now just like i said but later on we'll call the states render function and the updates render function through these and then we'll run and running is basically this update and then this render in your main file you're doing engine.run so perfect now if we could run this theoretically we should be able to print out something and it should not crash because we write perfect code and you see it ran perfectly nothing no problems here we did not get the hello from lua just yet and that did not come because we did not initialize it so init states once you do the init states this will call the function or call the file that calls that script so hello from lua executed perfectly here and this is a good first step into working on your lua slash c engine since we want to do most things from lua and not through c we're going to have to register a bunch of functions that we create here in c and send them into lua and that is a whole different story that needs a, its own little video so we're not going to do it right now but what i'm going to create here is just a little shell for that so void register lua functions and we define that and this will register all the lua functions that we have onto the lua stack and then we can call them from the scripts and it will call the c functions that we have here but to define these lua lua styled functions they're static they have different types of return styles and all that stuff so it's, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it directly you're gonna have to practice this a little bit but they all have the same syntax they all have the same form so it's not too hard once you actually get a hang of it so let's create a little lua function section here and we'll start off with making a very simple one in the next video where we can just call it from lua print something simple out and from there we'll start making more and more complicated ones so hopefully you learned something this video hopefully it was fun thanks so much for sticking around really appreciate it you guys are absolutely amazing this series is going to be so much fun i really look forward to it it might not be the perfect engine design but it will be enough for our game to run and for us to have some fun so thank you take care keep learning drop a like subscribe i'll see you in the next one Bye bye